All right, welcome back guys. Today I wanna to show you how to use Leap Party and how you're gonna start developing for Leap Party. We're gonna get our local, dev our local development server set up so you can start making changes, making PRs, and affecting real users. So uh, first off, here's the Leap Party Chrome extension on the, web, on the Chrome store. Um, I've already got it installed. You can see here it is. Sorry, I've got a lot of Chrome extensions. Um, and so this is the way it works. You know, I just click start party. I can click this at any time, this info button that kind of tells me how it works. Uh, there's this sidebar that pops up. This sidebar gives you information about what's going on. So you can see it gives it generates a random name for you. Um, I could share this link with a friend. That friend will be able to join this room with me. Uh, I can close and open the, the toggle bar. If I click ready up, you'll see uh, that pops up here um, in this information about all the users. Um, I could unready and ready up again. You can see it kind of clicks on and off. Then if I click start, um, you know, the, the room has started and these are the users that have submitted their answers, which is of course none. I have a solution lined up. If I click submit, you'll see the game is over because everyone in the room, which was just me submitted. Uh, and you'll see the details for the submission, and you can actually click on it and see this solution. Um, also, if we go back up here, you'll get a ranking of everybody that was in the game. And if you click on this, you can see a breakdown of the points that they got. Now you want lower points, and you get dinged for things like your runtime, your memory usage, coding time. This viewed code is if you, remember I showed you, you can look at other people's code after they, they submit. If you haven't submitted yet and you look at someone's code, you get dinged for that. Um, so, you know, you can still toggle, you can leave the game and, and that's about it. That's what we have for the Chrome extension. One other cool thing is if you're not on leak code, you can click random problem. It'll bring you to a random problem. And that's pretty much the entire leap party extension as it stands right now. Um, we don't have, we haven't had enough time to make new features that we want to do. So that's kind of why we're making these videos to help you help us to create new features so that we can reach more people. One thing I want to show you guys is if you go to metrics.leapparty.com, you're going to see a bunch of metrics. Uh, and this user stickiness is how oft if a user comes, uh, and tries us once, will they come back and try us again? So we, it's pretty low right now, but it used to be 5%. We've we've gotten it up from 5% and now it's 11%, which is good. Um, these submissions today were actually just me playing around. We've got 175 user signups. This submissions is broken here. I've already created a problem for it. Um, there's going to be, I need to do some investigation as to see why most of the rooms are still open. I also think that this is not a great measure, but here's one thing you'll see is most of the rooms only ever have one user. So I think people install this, they try it out, without any friends and think, oh, I'll try this later with friends and put it away and never use it again. Um, another thing is these, I think are supposed to say zero and they say one. So we'll have to fix that. And I'm not sure that data is populating here correctly because it implies that only two problems have ever been completed. And we know that's not true seeing as 101 unique problems have been finished on this platform. So anyway, I'm just kind of giving you an overview of the metrics board. Um, all right, so let's get this kind of set up, uh, the local development version. So let me remove this extension. Um, and let's get into it. So first off, let's get the back end up and running. So, uh, go here to the delete party backend repository. There's some steps to set it up. First one is of course, um, grab the, uh, clone, clone this. So get, get clone. And then you're going to just paste in what you copied there. If you're on uh, windows, make sure that you have installed, um, Git. And I think it just comes for free with Mac, but I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, okay. So since I've already done that, I'm just going to go CD into it says now we got to set up the database because we have this won't run it work if we just make run because we haven't set up the database so let's do that first things first go ahead install 
PostgreSQL for whatever client you have. I doubt you've got Solaris, but you could have downloaded that if you wanted to. And then you're just going to create a new database. Now this, this um, I, I have some local issue with, with this. It hasn't worked correctly for me. So if I go into PSQL and I list all of my databases, you'll see my Leap Party one is there. But um, it doesn't quite work when I try to connect to it. And it might not work for you either is, is something I should mention. Um, and something we talk about here, this connects file. This connects file is kind of what we, the, the actual data for the, I guess you'd call it metadata or the connection data for the database. So the backend connects to the database, right? And it has stuff like the username, the password. Um, if you create database lead party, you should be able to work for you. But if it wasn't working for you, like it doesn't work for me, then what you do is just put your username in here, which for me is Jason Goodison. And you can find that out by who am I? It will tell you. So PSQL will create a database with your username. And for some reason, this created one wasn't working for me. You know, I'll leave it as Leap Party for now and I'll show you how it wasn't working for me. And then if you have the same error, just change it to your username. Um, and the secrets file, okay, module.exports. Uh, and we're going to create the secrets file in the config folder. So in the config folder, config secrets.js here, I've already created it. And you just go ahead and paste that in there. Now let's try to make run. Okay, so if you get this error role, leap party does not exist. Just go ahead and type in your username here. And there you go. Things are working. It's set up. Um, every time you make changes to this backend, it will automatically reload. So even actually if I change this back to leap party and just saves the file, it would break it, right? And I could just change it right back. And I don't have to restart the server. It does it automatically. Okay, now we just need to get the front end working. Oh, and, and you're going to have to do an NPM install too. I've already done the NPM install. But NPM install will install all the packages. Make sure you do that before you do run make run. Um, all right, cool. So that works. Now for the front end, you go ahead and clone the exact same way. Uh, let me make a new terminal. Uh, dev documents, dev the party front end. I've already cloned it. Here it is. Here's the front end. Uh, go ahead and create an env.js in the root folder. This mjs tells the extension, uh, what backend it's hitting. So the endpoint, which backend testing equals true is a flag that we created that lets you make multiple people on one machine. So I could make one room and connect in, you know, three or four different browser tabs. If this testing equals true is turned on, if that's turned off, it's only one user per machine, which would make sense intuitively. Uh, but for testing, it's not so great. So just copy and paste these into the uh, env.js and that will set up. That's exactly what you need for the front end. Now, also, I should mention this port 4001. If you change the port on the back end, you'll have to update the port here too. But since we're, we haven't done that and you probably won't do that, uh, this is good as is. Then what we want to do is go to... Chrome extensions, Chrome colon slash slash extensions. Uh, make sure this developer mode is turned on. Load unpacked. All right, we've loaded it. Go and go ahead to find any leak code problem. I'm gonna refresh the page. Actually, I'll go to the inspect tab also. If you see any errors in the expect tab, the sorry. If you see any errors in the inspect tab about trying to connect uh, to local host and stuff, that's probably a red flag that your development backend is not working. Uh, but for us, 
I like to pin it so that it's easy to find. Let's go ahead and see if that works. Start party, and there you go. Uh, let's find that terminal. The terminal is showing some logging. There's a new user. It's creating a new user. It's giving this user ID to our uh, Chrome extension, and it's making a room for that user. Cool. Okay, so I wanna make my first feature for the Leet Code front end. Um, I found a nice, cool little feature to implement. If I do start party and then ready up, you'll see that this tab here, uh, this tab kind of explains everything that's going on in the, the Leet Code party. If I click unready, it'll pop up as unready, ready. If I click start, notice I didn't get any printing, but we like to print everything there just to kind of inform the user what's going on in the room. So how do we make sure that that's done? Well, let's go to our front end. You'll notice that we have this, we're, we're talking between the front end and the back end with uh, socket IO. So socket IO is a web socket between the server and the client. Think of a web socket as almost like a pipe. And you can push things through the pipe to the other person and the other person just listens. So the, the client is listening to one side of the pipe, the server is listening to the other side of the pipe and when they need to push information to each other, they just throw something down the pipe. Um, we define the, the you know, variables that we're throwing down the pipe. We're, we're defining these message types. Um, so this one is a room closing message. This one is a user left message. This is a user ready up message. Um, and so that's kind of just giving, you know, state about what happened on the front end or the back end. So the, the uh, front end will say, hey, user submitted when you click the submit button. Um, now, this listener here, room started message, this is what the server sends to the client when the room started. And that's why when the room started, you get all of this stuff updating, you know, begin coding, it starts a timer, all of that kind of stuff. Because the server tells the client, hey, the room started. So if we go to this handle room started function, it starts the room and then it sends message to pop up. Now I'm just gonna explain really quickly how this works. When you're uh, developing a Chrome extension, you have content scripts and background scripts and the pop-up. Now this is the pop-up here, this thing that I'm, I'm kind of highlighting. Uh, po this, there's a pop-up JavaScript um, file. There's a pop-up HTML. All of the pop-up stuff is contained within this pop-up. It even has its own console log. So the content script kind of just runs in the background all the time. The background script would too. And the content script is responsible. It's, it's run in the regular browser window. It's responsible for creating this sidebar. Now, when they need to talk to each other, when the content script talks to the pop-up script or the pop-up script talks to the content script, they have to use the Chrome API. So we've wrapped the Chrome API in this send message to pop-up um, function. And on the pop-up side, it would be send message to content script. It's just a really easy way for them to talk. Again, it's kind of similar idea to that uh, WebSocket thing we talked about, but since it's not going, it's not going over any network or anything. It's just these two scripts talking to each other. Um, so this send message to pop-up is, is what's actually going to, you know, change this to begin coding and put that timer on and say who submitted or who hasn't submitted. Um, and you'll notice here in the game over one, which we saw earlier, the sidebar said game over, everyone submitted. So it must be that we just forgot to enqueue another sidebar event. Now this sidebar, I should also, also mention, sorry, I know this is a lot of information. This is a lot of our code. And once you're in it, you'll start to really understand it. I'm just trying to really go over the basics of it here. So this sidebar, all of the code for it is in this class sidebar, sidebar.js. We have an, an enqueue function, and this enqueue function basically just schedules something to be shown on the sidebar. You can schedule any message you want, and you can create your own um, type, basically. So there's a user submitted type, and this one gives all that additional information, runtime, language. There is an error type, which changes the color to red. So, you know, you could say error, um, 
user, I don't know, not submitted or something, and you could put that in bold red. Uh, so the user, it really pops out to the user. The default is just these default values here, which is white, as you can see right there. Now, the enqueue event, all it does, like I said, is it enqueues a new message. So let's say, hey YouTube, the room started. Um, and we, we tend to use type info for just those basic events. So there's info events, there's user submitted events, there's error events, remember? So info is just a regular event happened. Um, we want to run this now, so we have to go into our Chrome extension and click update. That's going to update the Chrome extension. Then we have to refresh the page. Start party. Uh, ready up. And now if I click start, we should see that message. Hey, YouTube, the room started. There we go. So now we've actually created a feature. What do we do next? Um, we should get status. We see uh, the, the thing file we changed here. So a git diff will tell us what lines we've changed. That's the only line we've changed. So get status, then um, branch. You want to look at the branch. So this branch is master. You don't push directly to master. Um, you actually push to a side branch and then it's merged into master. Um, and the reason you do that is so that other people can look at the code before it goes into master. And master is just the main code uh, branch. So git checkout dash b. Um, updating sidebar on uh, room started. I know it's a very long descriptive name. Git status, git add, git commit, dash m, updating on room started. I'm going to end up deleting this anyway because I don't want it to say, hey, YouTube in it. But for now, whatever, we'll commit it. Uh, let's check one last time that we're on the right branch, get status, we've got all the right stuff, get push. This is how you create a new branch on GitHub. You have to run that. Um, so here I'll come to, this is the back end, I'll come to the front end. Updating sidebar and room started has recent pushes. Would you like to make a pull request? So you make a pull request. Um, yeah, that's fine. Updating on room started. It shows you the differences that you've made. And then you just go ahead and say create pull request and see how it's merging into master. It wants to commit into master from this branch that we've made. And that's about it. Then what will happen is Javin or me will come along and we'll leave comments on it. We'll like, for example, I'll come here and say uh, remove thing. I'll try to remove my face here. Remove thing about YouTube, um, start a review, you know, and then I'll, I'll leave the review request changes. Oh, well, I can't do it on my own. I guess that makes sense. So, uh, what will happen is then you'll come back, you'll look at it. You'll say, okay, I'll make the necessary changes. You make those changes. Then you can just do this thing, squash and merge and that will put it into the master branch. And then the next release we do, will have your code in it. So it's really that simple. There's not much to it. And I really hope that you guys create some branches and, and have some fun with this. Uh, we've got this issues tab here, which has some, some bugs that we've noticed. Uh, most of them are about the metrics page I showed you earlier. And I really hope that you guys learned something here. And if you guys have any more questions about how to get this set up, if it's not working for you, please let me know. I'll create another video. And that's it for today. So thank you guys so much. Please get this cracking on your machines and I wanna see your pull requests.